welcome to Business Coffee. So my first question today, I would like to know what did inspire you to start your business? Mm. Well, I, I don't think it's any one thing, actually. Okay. Right? It's, it's, it's a series of things, but probably the, the key thing is, is controlling my own, it's a big word, but controlling my own destiny, right? Control. Being able to call the shots and if it works, well, I'm proud of my success and if it falls flat, well, it's my own fault. What is your definition then of success? Yeah, um, <laughs> success, like success, it's almost like it implies an end, right? It's like, oh, I've reached the finish line, I've succeeded, I can, you know, go lie on a beach somewhere or something. I don't really see it that way. For me, it's more, am I having fun every day? You know, when I'm going to work, am I having fun? Do I feel like I'm accomplishing something? Mm -hmm. So, so long as I'm, I'm enjoying myself and I'm actually building my business and the targets we set ourselves, we're actually meeting those targets. That I, I, I call success, but it's like an ongoing thing. It's never an end point. We've arrived there, and that's it. You know, we've retired. It's an retire. ongoing process. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so there's no ending journey for you? <laughs> no. Well, I actually, I uh, I tend to get bored fairly quickly. Uh -huh. So I, I'm I'm pretty much on three-year cycles, right? Every three years, I kind of change dramatically what I do, and um, that's just because I get bored at some point, so I move on to the next thing. So there's never really an end point. It's like I just want to have fun all the time, whatever I'm doing. If I'm not having fun anymore, mm -hmm. I'll move on to the next thing I'm interested in or I enjoy doing at that point in my life. Do you feel that there's a specific skill set then for an entrepreneur? Um, no. <laughs> That's the short answer. No. I think, uh, I think the key thing for an entrepreneur is perseverance. Okay. It's really more about attitude, right? So starting a business is like an obstacle race. So you get to the first obstacle and the entrepreneur say, hmm, well, how am I going to get around this obstacle? I can go over, I can go under, I can sure. go around. So you get over the first hurdle. And you keep going and you can hit another hurdle. Uh -huh. you know? So the hurdles might be, I need to sign up first customer. My mm -hmm. technology doesn't work. We're not making our sales. We need to sign some partnerships. We, right? It's always a bunch of, and it's just figuring out how to get past each one. And that is really more just, uh, you know, having the perseverance never to give up, to keep going and being creative in finding solutions. So that's really what entrepreneurship is to me. All the other stuff is detailed. <laughs> Finding some research, I kind of discovered that you call yourself a chief geek, a oh. venture capitalist, and um, probably a private angel. So I would like to know who or who is Danielle then? Okay, so <laughs> actually the chief geek moni moniker was given to me by uh, my partner, John Stokes, okay. right? <laughs> so John Stokes and I, uh, as well as a few other people like Alan McIntosh, Jeff's, J.S. Cournoyer and Austin Hill, we put together a small venture capital fund okay. to do seed investments in web and mobile companies um, to try and get them off the ground. Like people had promising ideas, didn't necessarily have any experience, so we gave them a bit of capital and surrounding them by some people who had the experience they were lacking. So in that crew of investors, uh, the other my other partners are mostly business people. Mm -hmm. I was the only one with a technical background, so I'm an electrical engineer by training. And uh, you have a second degree also. I have a degree in economics as sure. well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, li I like to... Je me touche à tout, you know. I'm very <laughs> curious about different things, so I like to try my hand at different things. So. Okay, yeah. so this is where it came. Are you still part of... So, the first fund uh, is doing very well. Mm -hmm. um, we're no longer actively investing. All the money has been invested in the companies, and now they're just they're growing. Right? This we raised the second fund, but at that point I left. I did not become a partner in this new venture capital fund. Uh, I left to work full time on my startup, which is called Aja, mm -hmm. which I founded with a couple of other guys. Okay, so this is where you taking most of your time. So do you consider yourself much more now a private investor or? Angel, per se? No, I, I actually, I don't do any investing anymore. Okay. I'm focused fully on the entrepreneur side of the okay. table, right? So I used to be on the investor side. I've crossed over. I'm now a, an entrepreneur full time. So uh, I do still provide, you know, some, some mentorship and coaching to some people, uh, which some young entrepreneurs, I think they're, they have talent and they're showing some promise and they need some advice. I'm happy to help them out, but I no longer invest. Okay. So 
then what would be your message to those young entrepreneurs if they would like to start a business? What would you, what would you tell them? Stop thinking about it and just do it. <laughs> like literally, you can, you're going to think, 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 and try to do business plans, and try to get everything perfect and figured out. But most of your assumptions are going to be wrong. Most of your ideas will not work out. And the only way to find that out is to actually start and do it. And actually the hardest part about starting a business is to just say, okay, I'm, I'm going for it. Once you commit to doing it, it's not magic. It's just sticking at it and trying. And if this doesn't work, you try something else, right? That's true. And uh, it's just very scary to make that leap. But once you make the leap, it's not so bad, right? This business that I'm focused on right now, Asia, it's, uh, it's not a venture business. It's a, more, it's a traditional business, right? It's software-based, it's web service, but it's, uh, we actually have paying customers, which is kind of radical in the web world to actually have paying customers. <laughs> but uh, we started this business because we wanted, we wanted to bootstrap it. We did not want to take outside investment. Okay. So I'm a very rational person, right? So I'm an engineer by training. So I'm very rational and I had a lot of experience in finance and startups. So we, kind of, we had a pretty good plan from the get-go, and we stuck pretty close to the plan. So nothing dramatic happened because our plan was pretty good, and we kind of knew what we were doing. We had experience in the sector. We, we'd done our research before mm -hmm. we started. Is that a challenge for businesses to have good or key associate or employees or oh, whatever yeah. you want to call oh, it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's actually your number one challenge. Okay. Right? You can recover from anything except bad people, especially when you start out. Like the reality is, most large organizations have lots of bad people in mm -hmm. them, because you know what? If you have a few people which aren't delivering the goods, and you have a 50,000 50, people on your payroll, it doesn't really matter. Okay. But when you're starting your business and there's four people or ten people in the team, if you have one or two which aren't pulling their weight, it's going to kill you. So you need a bunch of star performers when you get going because you have limited resources and you can't afford to have someone who's not pulling their weight. So finding really good people is, is hard uh, and it's the most important thing. Also, when you start a business, right, when, you start when you're tackling a, a problem, you say, okay, I've got an idea how to solve this problem, but the deeper you go into it, the more things you see you can fix and improve and do better. So there's an endless list of things we want to do, right? It's like, I could look at all the list of things we want to do. It's like, okay, we got another five years ahead of us. And in the next five years, while we're tackling all these problems, we're going to discover another 20 years worth of problems. So, so long as there's interesting stuff to do and the company is growing and you get, it's really fun when you get the, the feedback from, uh, from customers, you know, which are going, wow, this product's awesome, it helped me do this, and you know, you go to conferences and go, oh, you're the guys behind Aja, I love it. So that's really motivating. So this is what wakes you up every morning and this is what keeps you going. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Danielle, for being on our show. Thank you so thank much. Thank you.